Hey everyone, it's Chris Chico, and today uh, we have a great case study interview uh, with Bo Hollis. Uh, Bo, you, we, you and I spoke one time over the phone, so this is kind of like still us getting to know each other. And um, uh, Bo is in my Five Motivated Sellers Online group, and so we're going to be discussing. Uh, actually, he got his uh, first uh, Facebook uh, deal using uh, using my methodology, uh, but we got a lot of other uh, things to discuss, including that real nice. Uh, a nice domain that you have right there, Simply Sold. Uh, I was going to say, I, I, I was going to kid with you the other day. I said, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, oh, well, that seller that you posted the video, she said you had nice eyes. But real estate investors tell you, oh, you have such a nice domain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she was, a, she was a character, I will say. Yeah. She, she I, think, I think if she was uh, maybe about uh, 20 years younger, she would have chased you around the house. <laughs> I, think, I think she may have. <laughs> but I will use that video forever. Yeah, yeah. It she is going to be. You see, like, such a nice. Yeah, we're talking. Uh, Bo had posted a testimonial video in our group, and it was just a nice, sweet little old lady. And she looked at him and said, uh, and Bo asked, asked her, Hey, why did you uh, why did you choose me? And she looked at him and she goes, "Because of those eyes." But you know that she really did. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I think she did. I think I know she did. I know she did. So, uh, so uh, I don't think I, I know how, how. Give me a little bit about your history. How long have you been in? How long have you been doing real estate investing? And what did you do before real estate investing? Uh, so before before this, I. Uh, uh, before real estate investing, I did it life insurance sales. I did life insurance sales training okay. uh, for large companies uh, like Mutual of Omaha, Transamerica, and I had a real estate. Uh, I had a life insurance agency, uh, and I had trained a lot, a lot of agents. We had a good size agency, and I traveled around training agents. Uh, for, uh, life insurance. You know, Florida, Georgia, Texas. Oh, then you broke uh, out for just a second. So you, you um you were you were traveling. You, you just missed the last uh, sentence. You were traveling training agents as well. You had yeah, your own agency, I, but also you were training agents as well. Yep. So we trained locally here, uh, where I live in locally in Louisville, Kentucky, and then in Indiana, just all over the place. We train people to sell life insurance. Interesting. So I mean, you've. I would say, uh, you know, this business real estate is about sales, but you got to be really good at sales to sell life insurance because it's something that people generally don't want or don't think they need. Yeah, and those are the two things. Like when, when you're selling life insurance, you're selling something that they will actually never use. That's you know, true, not, yes. You're not getting any benefit out. So you have to be really, really good at selling life insurance because you're selling something that they're actually get zero use out of while they're alive, that, right. but they have to pay for it. So... It's very difficult sale, and I did it door to door, which is even harder. Oh, wow, you did it door to door. Okay, so you're like you're like a ninja man on sales here. So now, what what uh, what made you? Uh, where was the bridge to go into real estate? How did that happen? Uh, because of that was a very difficult job. Uh, it was a grind, you know, for me to get out there and do that, and then like make my money selling life insurance plus training people. Right. Uh, it was very very difficult, and I, I just kind of, I got burnt out doing it. I, I was, I was tired of working with the company that I had worked with and uh, my, my youngest son, he had um, a major health problem mm. um, that, that just kind of was a big setback for our family. He had to have open heart surgery. Oh, wow. And uh, when he was a baby and that just changed my mindset mentally that I, that job really required me to be outside of the home, like all the time, like okay. morning and die to travel and just being outside the home was very difficult for me and it just needed to move on. And I, I found real estate investing and wholesaling. So, uh, I figured that in, in hindsight, I said, man, if I hear these guys doing these interviews and thinking, man, if they can do that and I'm out there knocking doors and yeah. like, this is child. You were thinking, man, this, this is, is child's, child's play. play. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, if these chunks can do this, there is no reason that I cannot do this. And it just, um, it worked out. It worked out well for me. And just, it's not really the hardest thing. Wholesaling real estate is not really that hard. Mm -hmm. it, there's some very simple steps that you need to take to be successful. But overall, 
you know, here I am three years later after I made that decision. I've been doing this now three years. And then how, time. And how did you get, what was your path in terms of uh, like learning the business? Did you, did you attend a seminar? Did you do it uh, through YouTube university or uh, mentorship or how, how did you get, uh, how did you get started? Oh, uh, actually I hired a mentor. I hired okay. a mentor and um, I just went through the mentorship class. And really when I started three years ago, there wasn't a lot of people teaching on YouTube as it is today. You know, the gurus, you know, I should say that the guru people were not as on YouTube as they are now. You know, there, there weren't, everybody wasn't having their stuff on. I shouldn't use the word guru, but the guys who actually are doing the business um, successfully were not actually on YouTube nearly as much as they are now. As they are now, yeah. Well, I, I say in YouTube, there's two people. There's the gurus and the people that say that they're not gurus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. like I, I say this on videos like as if like it's like like you're like a leper oh i'm sorry don't call me that um, <laughs> so, now, so you've been uh, is your primary model uh strictly wholesaling or you're also doing fix and flip yeah so i started out doing strictly wholesaling and then i had this really terrible awful decision that i should flip houses uh and actually and start that business too and that was a a downward spiral uh bad choice because I can make so much more money wholesaling. So yeah, I took like a nine. So in other words, you yeah, started yeah, rehabbing. Right? Yeah. I started doing that and uh, that was a bad, bad decision for about nine months. Um, and we just have the last three listed currently that we, that I have uh, that are currently on the MLS that are fixed and flips. And so that was a bad choice. So me. now you're strictly so doing strictly wholesaling. wholesaling. Okay, yep. so strictly wholesaling, and then um, are you are you uh, are you all assignments, or do you double close, or how do you do? Uh, are, are, how are you most of your deals? I double close my deals here, and we don't have to use transactional funding in our state, so uh, I just use the the end buyer's money. And okay, close. and is that is that because uh, just to keep things clean, or just uh, is there a particular reason why versus an assignment, or you just it's a cleaner it's a cleaner deal for you because you can do A to B to B to C funds. Uh, I, I like doing it for a couple reasons. So the first reason is that, um, well, I guess there's a lot of good reasons. So I guess number one would be that, well, let me say I do, I do assignments sometimes. It just right. depends on who, who the buyer is and how much money I make. Right. Um, so that's, that's that. I will say that I, I do assignments sometimes, rarely, but nine out of 10, I double close. So number one would be that to protect my buyer, you know, from, Buyers, people say that buyers don't care. They they'll tell you that they don't care, but they really do care how much money that you until you they see they don't care until you see your assignment fee. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. they do care, and don't ever let anybody lie to you and say they don't care. Right. They don't care. Um, they may do the deal, but they're not going to keep buying from you. And if they do buy from you, they're really going to beat you up on price. Right. Right. Because they think you're making that much on the next one. Well, you broke out there for a second. Yeah. So they're going to beat you up on price. Right. Um, okay, so I think we're back here. Yeah. Um, so the other reason is that I like to uh, I like to sit in front of the sellers and actually do what I said I was going to do, which is buy their house. Right. I don't I don't tell my sellers, hey, I'm going to find I'm going to find a buyer. You know, I'm, I'm going to put the two parties together. Then because you're really you're you're walking a very fine line there if you're telling a buy, a seller that you're going to put them together with a buyer and right. spread you know brokering without a license, you could get in trouble for that. Um, and so okay. I really like to do that. Uh, just it keeps my word. And then I also can get really good testimonials and it's a lot of big, longer plan for me to be able to take pictures and say, I bought somebody's house. Right. Right. And, and also I, I do agree with you. That it's cleaner for, uh, for le legal purposes. So then now there's always a trail that you bought and you sold. So you're not in yep. that gray area. Um, yep. of, um, uh, cause I, what, what happens is a lot of people do say that, which I, I never recommend, but a lot of people tell the seller, Hey, I'm going to find a buyer for you, which you should never even those never use those, never, use never come out of your mouth, never, never come out of your mouth because you, uh, that's, you're, that's going to get you in trouble. You were definitely going to get in trouble and the real estate commission is going to come after you for brokering without a license for using those very words. Exactly. Exactly. So then now when you, st um, so, um, in terms of you, you and I spoke about this cause I want to, before we get into Facebook, I had two questions. One is about the simply. So the first one is you were doing, um, you, you told me that you've never done direct mail. Cause I asked you this uh, mm -hmm. when we were on the phone, you never did direct mail. So how did you get started uh, generating leads and, and what, 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 uh, you know, what were you focused on in terms of lead generation? 
so at the at the very beginning, um, the coach that I had hired at the beginning was all a direct mail person. Right. And I was just thinking, you know, I had some money in the bank for my insurance business uh, because that was successful. But I wanted to, I don't know, I just, maybe I should have done direct mail, but I just didn't. I just decided, you know what, I was driving around my town and there were no bandit signs. So sure. I was just thinking, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do bandit signs. Bandit signs, okay. So I, I did bandit signs. I would put them out by myself, like uh, I would do insurance in the daytime and I'd put bandit sounds at signs out at nighttime, about like a hundred at a time, 150 at a time. Um, and I found out when our city, this is like a secret ninja trick for bandit signs. Um, I found out when our city cut the grass. Oh, I found out when the city cut the grass and then I would go out immediately the day after they cut the grass or that night that they cut the grass and I'll stick the bandit signs in, in the grass. So I would at least have until the next time they cut the grass. Oh, that's like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would do bandit signs. So okay. if you're doing bandit signs, that's a good, that's a good tip. That's a good tip. Yeah. So you're doing bandit signs. And so that's how you started to get your first set of deals and started to get going. And then I think, did you mention to me, maybe I'm mistaken with somebody else. Did you, were you also starting to do cold calling as well or no? Yeah, no, I did. I did cold calling uh, right after bandit signs. Uh, I got into cold calling and, uh, I just started cold calling myself. I would be on the phone and I use the dialer and okay. just start cold calling. And then are you and now, that's how I got started. are you now do still, are you still doing cold calling? Do you have people doing cold calling for you? Yeah. Okay. Now I have VAs do cold calling for me. Okay. And, uh, that's, that's what I do now with, with, with cold calling side of the business. So right now you're still, are you still, so you're still doing the bandit signs and the cold calling. I don't do any bandit signs right now. Okay. But I just started noticing that I just started noticing that there's no more bandit signs in our city. Uh, so now would be a really good time to go good back time into to it, it because everybody's because okay. everybody's going into the cold calling and all of these bad marketing. So now is a good time to go back to the things that people are running away from. People are running away from, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's it's pretty amazing, I think, how many this I've never experienced something. I mean, you know, direct mail, that's a given because you know, direct mail is now has been around for a while. Back when I started in 2003, when I was first uh, doing postcards and 24 recorded messages, there weren't that many people doing direct mail. Now it's a given, but it surprises me how many people I talk to. And I would have to say nine out of 10 people are doing cold calling. I mean, it's, and we were doing cold calling. I don't know if I told you this, but we're doing cold calling here in Miami. And we thought, okay, this is a great opportunity uh, for us to try to not have the, the noise inside of direct mail. And we would call people and they would tell us, oh, well, I had two calls from somebody already this week, you know, on, uh, and, and this was just like a general absentee owner list. It wasn't like a specialized list that was really small. So it really surprised, you know, it, it's really amazing how the sheer number of people that are cold calling right now. Um, and now where, where did the, oh, yeah. where did the Simply Sold come in? How did that, um, when in your real estate, uh, you know, if you started three years ago, when did you acquire the domain and, and uh, how did, you know, just talk to me a little bit about that. So the way I kind of thought through this was that there were maybe about, let's see, almost maybe two years ago, uh, a lot of the people that are doing this, they are kind of, um, they didn't have any money. They were just kind of like a, a frumpy a home right. buyer kind of a person and uh, a non-professional. And I just, one day I, the name popped into my head and I'm like, that would be awesome. So I went and looked it up and a domain broker had it. Mm. It wasn't being used. And so I contacted this guy and this was maybe almost two uh, Hold 20 on, you, months or so. You broke contacted the, broke the guy. Out. You said you contacted the guy, and they said it was about twenty months ago. Is that what you said? It was about twenty months ago. I contacted this guy, and he said that he wanted uh, a very large sum of money for this domain name. Right. And so we negotiated about a year, and I had to pay for it. So uh, it was just something that kind of came. I had to work on it for a long time, and ended up working out. And I really wanted it because I know that it was. Something I just wanted to be a professional home buyer and go that direction versus the, you know, the we buyers and the I buyer right. guys, and I would want to go a different direction. Just be 
a more professional company and uh, branding is a big thing, you know, thinking long term versus just like, hey, I need to make 10 grand now, you know, branding long term and thinking, you know, I want to be in the business five years from now, 10 years from now. Now, do you find that uh, having that, you know, you have, having a, what I call it is you have a great domain, but that doesn't mean that, you know, somebody doesn't have to have the perfect domain. They could have a, a but let's say we use, the, uh, uh, use more of a conversation around branding, around the fact that you're building something that to, this, to, the, to the general public looks like a more legitimate operation than just, hey, I buy houses, here I'm the local guy, et cetera. Do you find that it does, um, uh, what impact does it have when you are speaking with sellers and you're out there in the marketplace? Would you say that there's one or two things that really stand out for you in terms of uh, that helping you? Well, you know, it, it kind of comes back down to sales. We, we started about this in the beginning, you know, and there's, there's reasons that people choose people versus other people, right? It's right. things that make us a, a salesperson or a business, you know, do sales is, is likability and credibility. They got to yeah. be able to like you. And if, then you're not going to sell you something if they don't like you. Right. If you're not credible there. You're, you're going to the sales over. Right. So they may like you, but if you're not a credible person, it's the same thing in business. So I try to be likable. And then I also try to make sure that our business has a lot of cred credibility and credibility is, you know, your, your testimonials. The reason I do double closes, you know, testimonials, I'm not assigning things. You know, I can have lots of videos and pictures and it's more of a long-term strategy for brand building. And in my opinion is long-term strategy. People can go on there and they may choose me because I've had a history. I can show a history of what we're right. doing. I'm making like you make YouTube videos, you know, I'm doing the same thing and just, just really doing lots of things right. And it just is going to take time to, to get out there. Um, I joke with my friends and I'll say, you know, a year or two, I'll be an overnight success, you know? Right. Right. Well, yeah. uh, I know you said that I haven't looked at it, but one of the things that uh, one of the guys in that group, Franklin, he's doing a good job in terms of his branding in his local marketplace where, you know, if you're talking with a seller and you're in competition with other people and now you've got a YouTube channel and they can go and they can get a, get a feel for you, you're giving them tips, yeah. your testimonials and everything else, you know, there's other fundamentals that have to be in there, meaning that, you know, you got to agree on price and you got to be great. You know, you got to be good with them uh, either on the phone or in person. But if there's, if you're, if you're close, which many times you're close between mm -hmm. you and somebody else, then now all those things might be the thing that tips the seller over to go with you. And sometimes it's not about price. Sometimes they might, and, and I've, uh, they might go with you because they feel more comfortable, even though you might be a little bit less, but they feel that you're more credible and you're going to get the, the, the job done. Yeah, yeah, informing your the people that you're working with, very, very informative about your business, how it works, and they're going to go and look online for you anyways. They're going to Google your name, and they're going right. to Facebook you and Instagram you. So, if it, the whole persona of who you are as a home buyer, they're going to look you up because we do the same thing, right? We look up if we're going to do business with somebody, we look them up and right. uh, see who they are. So, like if you're posting political stuff on Facebook and like going on these rants and posting crazy stuff and right. You know, they're going to look at you and they're going to judge you because people do judge a book by its cover, no yeah, matter what they, they say. So just try to be a, I try to be that guy who's just very, uh, I'm one, I do barbecue and real estate and that's about, that's about it okay. with my social media. Right. And so it, both of those are non, uh, they're not going to offend somebody who wouldn't like it. Hey, those are two very American things, barbecue and real estate. <laughs> they are. Everybody, everybody can love those things. And people comment, man, I, they look up, man, I love the food. Yeah, and that's right. Obviously, you yeah. have a... Uh, and I, I love barbecue. Every time I go anywhere, I was looking for the local barbecue spot that I could go to and check out. So Yeah, I have, well, have to come up and then we'll have an awesome barbecue. Yes, yes. Uh, now, so let's... Um, so now with Facebook, um, have you, I know you got started. When did you, when you get started using, uh, implementing my stuff in Facebook? Was it uh, a few months ago or was it last year? I'm trying to. Around the first, of the, I would say it's around the first of the year, you know, the, January, February. Okay. I started using it. Now, had you done, had you done, uh, had you done Facebook before or no? Very, very minimally. Nothing, um, not your style of Facebook a much more uh, intense style of, uh, you know, lists and like very detailed stuff that it was difficult for me. So, okay. Yeah. I remember you telling me cause you were, you were uploading a lot of customer lists and audiences mm -hmm. right in order to target them. And then that, that was, I think you've mentioned to me, it was kind of a little bit lackluster. 
Um, yeah, I think Facebook made some changes in there and how people viewed stuff and right. lists. So that was, I, I didn't have the knowledge, to, the technical expertise to, to combat that problem. Now, had you done, I, I don't know if I asked you this, but had you done PPC before in the past? Never. Never. Okay. So, so you never, you never decided, you never, because uh, one of the things for me, uh, let me see if I lost you there. You kind of, oh, one of the things for me when I first got into Facebook was I, I analyzed, you know, Facebook versus Google pay-per-click. And then um, a couple of friends that I spoke with told me, you know, basically said, hey, look, if you, if, unless you got like, you know, in my market, unless you got like 7,500 or 10 grand to spend on this thing, don't even try it. Don't even think about it. And so then uh, that's why I asked you whether or not if that was something you ever tested or even considered uh, trying Google pay-per-click. No, I, I never have. And this Facebook for me, this was part of my brand building, right? Like being on oh, Facebook, getting yeah. seen, you know, people seeing my face and smiling and like all the stuff that I, my simply sold stuff. I want everybody to see it. You know, it may not pay right. off today, but you know, six months from now they say, oh, yeah, I saw that guy. Now, one of the things, so uh, getting into the Facebook now, um, what would you, how is it that, uh, I'm trying to think about, so you started with a Facebook and then uh, I know you just recently got your first deal, but uh, trying to think about how to best frame the conversation. So you have the Simply Sold and, mm -hmm. uh, and generally we, we say, hey, go out and, um, so there's two ways to approach uh, Facebook. One way is the typical, hey, we buy houses cash and being very, it's very generic, very stock photo-ish, et cetera, yeah, yeah. which is what I saw when people were, were or when I first started. And then I have a more personalized approach where I say, hey, go with the personal approach. And in the group, when people do both, and, and I, I recently Matt in the group just got his first deal. And he started out with the very corporate, very, you know, you know, just very cold approach. He switched over to the more personal approach. And then now that's what started to get him traction. Now, one of the things I'm wondering with you is uh, you're, you have the Simply Sold brand and wondering where, where do you sit in that, in that continuum? Do you tend to be uh, more, more corporate or, more, or maybe a mixed match of the two of them? Well, I, I do. I'm doing most of my stuff through Simply Sold and I'm in the process of split testing for your advice. Mm -hmm. uh, even though your, your course you know, is very like, hey, dude, you know, Bo buys houses type thing. And, but I am in the process of split testing to see what results I get. Uh, Bo buys houses versus uh, Simply Sold. So I do Simply yeah. Sold because I want a brand build as well. Right. You know, because they may see something somewhere else, you know. Right. Online. So it's brand building plus leads. Well, one of the things that I say, it's, it's like direct mail. You know, with direct mail, uh, many times people will do a rotation. Well, they'll send a branded postcard. And then they'll send a postcard that is more personalized. Uh, so one of the things that I like Franklin does in the group is that he has his true investor uh, mm -hmm. main site, and then he has Franklin buys houses. And he, he, he rotates them both. So he's constantly running and giving people a different look. Now, even once they see Franklin, they still see his true investor brand, right? Because that's everywhere. So they, was, they yep. will still see you're simply sold. But it, it's like the same principle, just giving them a different look. Because sometimes people might say, well, I'm not going to call a company. I want to call an individual. But so you're giving them both options for that. Yeah. And, and on my Facebook page, too, I, I try to post stuff and really be consistent there. And then I put videos of me talking and different things like that, just so I put a personal touch to my business brand and not be like a, you know, a super, super professional, but make it you know, approachable. Okay. And then now, um, so now... You're doing mostly, um, uh, in terms of your targeting, are you, are you doing mostly the zip code ads or are you doing the general area pin drop or uh, what, what, how, what's, uh, what are you doing in terms of, of, your mar of your targeting now? So I've only done zip code ads up, up until this point, okay. but I'm actually, like, as of the recording of this, uh, this, this video here, uh, I'm in the process of doing some pin drop ads. Okay, and I sent you a link actually to that, uh, that module that I'm in the process of publishing for the video ads because you asked me about that the other day. Yeah. Um, and now let's, you had the, the deal that you closed last week. You closed the deal. I think you made like 20, 24K, I think, from that deal. Yep. Now, now that deal was, uh, was zip code targeting. Uh, was, that an, was that lady, uh, an owner occupied living in the house oh. or was it absentee? It was owner occupied. Owner occupied living in the house. Okay. And now uh, um, she, you know, it's funny. There's a couple of things. I think a couple, a couple interesting things with that whole deal. Number one is the lady. The lady was 
what, over 70 minimum? Yeah, she was, and what's so funny about this, I don't think I told you this, but uh, I had actually sold this lady life insurance. Oh my gosh, did she remember you? She didn't, and I didn't tell her until the closing. Oh. Because, because I, didn't, I didn't want her to feel like, I, I don't want her to feel like, oh, feeling like she would need to accept my offer. Okay, Are you, so you, you broke Are out you there for a second. Yeah, you, you didn't want her to feel like she had to accept your offer because you had, you had done business before. Yeah. Or she yes, could have said, oh my God, right. that was the most, she could have said, oh my God, that was the most horrible investment that I ever made in my life. I don't want to do anything with you now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. And so I told her at the, at the closing table that, you know, hey, I know you. And she was like, I've been telling all my friends. She goes, I know this guy from somewhere. I just can't remember where. And so she was, she was really excited about it. Oh, that's interesting. So, well, you know what, I find, I find interesting a couple of things about that, about that a couple couple things that are notable about that transaction number one is the age of the owner right because we tend to think that you know people are not tech savvy the older people you got to send them mail but yet she is on facebook she's on facebook man <laughs> she was playing golf clash like the ipad games she Wait, was, hold on. You're, you're she's playing these games now you broke out again when you said that. You said she was on Facebook, and then after that, it broke out, whatever she was, you said. She was playing iPad games. She was playing, playing Golf Clash. She oh. was playing all of these games, man, when I got there. She was totally tech savvy. She oh. could text me. She had an iPhone. She was with it. Yeah, that's, that, I think that's, that's a very – it's an interesting thing because that's one of the things that uh, got me into Facebook when my mom – all of a sudden says, Hey, I got a, I got a smartphone. And I'm like, really? And she's like, and my mom thinks, you know, my mom thinks Facebook is the internet. Right. So I'm like, really mom? And she's like, yeah, send me some photos, DM me. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should, you know, cause in my mind I was like, well, our prospects typically are older people have a property that they've owned for a while, et cetera. And then that's what made me rethink things and say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe they are, maybe our sellers are on Facebook, right? <laughs> uh, they totally are. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, now with her though, uh, the other the other thing that was interesting that you posted about is that when you went to see her, uh, she had a lot of other mail from other real estate investors. Yeah, it was stacked up right on her counter, and uh, I knew the other investors who were sending mail. So why, why do you think that uh, the question, I'm trying to think about, this is more like a trying to understand maybe uh, the mindset and, and what happened there in the background is that, um, why do you feel that she responded to you versus she hadn't responded or even uh, you know, was inclined to respond to the other people that had sent mail? What made the difference? You know, because I think sometimes those little postcards, it, it can, I get it, if you're getting a ton of them, it could seem very scammy, right? right? And so I think a lot of people, they like to do things on their time and they like to make the decision. So if you're putting them essentially in the driver's seat by making them, you're putting the ad in front of them, but they're the one who was in charge. They clicked the, they clicked the ad, they contacted you and right. they're the ones who are making the decision to sell, even though you're putting the ad in front of them. So even though they have stacks of cards, they're the ones who are going in there verifying your credibility and trust and all those kind of things. Right. If you do the right things, you know, they're going to choose you because, you know, they wanted to sell in the beginning, but they just, they don't know if it's a scam. They can't really verify because you're not, by getting a postcard, you're not, Yeah. you know, there's not a lot of credibility there to look, look you up, I guess. That's well, my, I think, I think if, you're getting, if you're getting a postcard or a letter, you're getting multiple of them. So then it's like, it's almost like, you know, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I always buy used cars, right? Always buy cars that are a couple of years old. And, um, and uh, as soon as you buy the car, you start getting bombarded with all these uh, extended warranty, right? And the first one you get, you think is legitimate. Like, oh, maybe it is legitimate. But the minute, over the next couple of days, you get like 10 of them. Now you start to think, oh, they're saying, like, this is like, this is something going on here. Right. And then all of a sudden you step back and you're like, you know, maybe I need to investigate this before I give these guys a call. So I think kind of like the same thing happens there. Number one, um, Dom in, uh, in our group who I'm having an um, a, a updated interview with him uh, this week, too. He's doing great with Facebook. And one of the things that he's uh, he has had people tell him was that they thought that he was more legitimate because he was on Facebook. 
compared mm -hmm. to like, because the people consider Facebook, you know, a lot of times we don't realize it, it's an interesting thing because we're in the business. So we're running ads and we know their ads. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day. They didn't even realize that the things that say sponsored that, that were ads, they thought that it was just Facebook thought that they were, rec they thought that Facebook was recommending it, you know? So, so I thought, oh, that's it. I never heard of that. Like, okay, that's it. She said, yeah, you, I didn't know you could pay for those ads. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting to know, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can see that the way you would think that. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's okay. That's yeah. fine. As long as it Fair. works. So, so what Dom said that uh, people, people have said to him, no, I thought we, you were, I, was, I didn't call the cards because I thought you were more legitimate because I saw you on Facebook. You know, and, and so you yeah. were online. It's, especially if you're on your Facebook page, making posts all the time and actually engaging, like actually right. quality content, not just being like, uh, just using your page for ads and not actually have engagement. So when they scroll back through, you're not like your last post was in December of last year. You know, like actually look like you're a legit business. Legitimate business, yeah, yeah. And and so then, uh, which actually, um, a couple of guys, um, have in other groups that I belong to that are not real estate related, they, they talk about the fact that uh, page engagement. So if you're posting on that page regularly, they're saying that they're seeing a decrease in CPMs because now Facebook uh, gives you better, uh, a better distribution because they, they feel that, you know, a legitimate business, if you had a legitimate business, you were selling whatever, a widget, you know, you're selling something, you would be posting regularly. You would be updating the page and you would be interacting with customers and everything else. And they see that as a sign that you're legitimate, that you're a real business versus somebody just like opportunistic. And uh, some of the guys, uh, quite a few of the guys have said that they are getting better CPMs, lower CPMs uh, because of that, because of the page engagement. Yeah, like I post pictures with me and my kids, you know, like in front of a house or something like that. I think one right. of my recent posts, I, I took my son and I just had him standing in front of the house and he was doing like this and smiling and laughing and just took a picture of him and said, you know, Jack bought his first house. My engagement was like crazy, you know, that I had. I even ran that as an ad and it was awesome. And then now, so, now, are you, um, do you have any other deals that you have pending from uh, right now with, with the Facebook or no, this was the first one? No, this was the first one. So I ran some camp, I ran some campaigns and then I, some reason stopped running my campaigns. Uh, well, I know the reason why is because I got neck deep really up to here in my flip business and just, I had to like put everything on hold to not let the ship sink uh, and get all these things out of my way and just get them listed and done and deal with the contractor headaches and all the things that go along with that side of the business. And uh, so now I'm ramping back up on my wholesale side of things. Now in terms of like the mix, in terms of your marketing for deals and everything else, do you see like the Facebook, uh, are you gonna, I assume you're, you're, you're planning on pushing harder on that and because, because you oh, see yeah. the viability of it. Yeah. I was talking to a friend yesterday and he was, um, he was talking to me and he was like, you know, so, you know, asking me about my, my KPIs and he was like, you know, you could just go and, you know, spend 10 grand on Facebook, you know, this month and go out there and just get tons of deals. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I could, and, you know, I could go out there and do that and just load up my pipeline because I have the experience to manage lots of deals. Right. So yeah, I could go out and do that. So I, I am planning on, on spending a significant amount of money just to really pack my pipeline up. And because a lot of times, like this last deal that I just did, the lady actually contacted me, I think it was in February, mm -hmm. and said she wanted to sell her house around May. Oh, it, just, it, okay. it took follow up. You know, it was actually yeah. like a real wholesale deal because yeah. not many times that people, you, they want to sell like next week. You know, that's not very common. You know, it happens, but it's not like, as you know, you know, yeah. it's not like, hey, I need to, I'm moving. I got to sell this thing right away. You know, that's very rare. It, a lot of times the deals just take follow up. And this is one of those deals, you know, it took two months of follow up. I did what she asked me to do and close on our property. Yeah. The, um, the, um, you know, like for example, Dom in our group, uh, at, um, he, he was doing direct mail and then, uh, he was really struggling with it. So he, now he's only doing Facebook. I think for Franklin is only doing Facebook. I know Franklin mm -hmm. used to be with uh, clever and uh, so he knows, you know, he knows all the different marketing aspects, but he's just doubling down and focusing on that. So I definitely think, you know, I look at it as 
uh, you know, Facebook is like a Ferrari and most people drive it on first gear. But at some point, right, and I think you're, you know, once you understand the platform, you understand how everything works and, and now you're, you're, you you're kind of have a bit of momentum in terms of being able to understand how the system operates. You realize that, oh man, this car has like five or six gears. Uh, and I, I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, and I, we had the discussion, you and I, is that in the in the past when you have these like the home investors that they have the billboards all over town and they spent, you know, millions of dollars over a couple of years to have that market presence. You know, yeah. I think that you could have that market presence to the people in your market that are interested because you don't, you know, here's the thing is like you don't need to be known in your entire market. You just need to be known to the people that are thinking about selling. Right. Exactly. And, if, and if, if that's the universe and they think that, my God, these guys must be buying every single house every over house. time because, yeah, um, then, you know, uh, that's where the, like those the, the video views campaign and everything else, because, you know, mm -hmm. even in the um, and it works for all businesses because it works for the real estate for the real estate business. And obviously we use Facebook ads for the info business. And it's funny in the info business. Many times people will say, well, man, I, I'm just seeing all your ads and I see your videos all over the place. But most people don't really uh, understand that that's like everybody's own. Your Facebook is different than my Facebook. I'm seeing different things. You're seeing different things. Um, and I think that you, with you and your branding that you have, I mean, you could dominate that market in a very short period of time with not, not, with not that much, with a, with a fraction of the money that you would have normally spent if you were doing it the old school ways, you know, with, with the billboards and all that other stuff. Yeah. I mean, you, you brought up, you know, the home investors. I mean, I have friends who run home investors franchises and one of my buddies, he runs one in Phoenix in the amount of money that the group, like the conglomerate spends in the Phoenix market is yeah. astounding, mind blowing how much money these guys spend on marketing every month. It is, you know, what? the, the funny, uh, they had reached, uh, we had, uh, we had reached out to, to me because they were interested in Facebook. But what's interesting is they they have to uh, advertise a particular way. So our way of advertising on Facebook, they couldn't do. They're like, no, we can't do that. You know, ours has to be a particular look and feel, and it has to be corporate, it has to be approved, and everything else. So to so a certain extent, sometimes they're 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 kind of handcuffed by. Um, and we've had some home investors guys that we work with, um, and where they're they're wanting us to do their ads, and you know because of the fact that they can't go through corporate because it's it's. You know, they're, they're, they're constrained on, the, on, on what the messaging is, et cetera. Yeah. 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 The, these guys spend a ton of money, though. I mean, like major, major money marketing. So w one of the things I wanted to ask you is um, advice for, you know, now you starting, you know, say you're getting started with Facebook. Um, any particular, uh, and this could be general advice, but say there's a lot of guys that we have that are starting brand new. So mm -hmm. um, what would you say is, you know, I would say there's, there's tactical advice and there's mindset and the ways of looking at things. And many times people have the tactical stuff down pat, but the mindset is really what holds people back. Um, so as an example, for yeah. example, what, one thing that I find many times is people will say, oh, Chris, um, I generated a bunch of leads and um and and uh, nobody's motivated and then i ask them well how many leads did you generate and how much did you spend per lead and they're like oh i generated 10 leads and i spent 15 dollars a lead but i haven't gone anywhere and i'm like what are you talking about that's like would you would you would you send you know like it's just, like their mindset is oh i gotta get you know i I've, I've got 15 leads and i and my answer is it's a numbers game you know don't talk to me don't your your numbers are great don't come back until you've at least generate 50 leads and you talk to 50 leads, right? Um, yeah. So I was curious as to any advice that you would give for, for uh, especially with, with the Facebook and, and this thing here, for people starting out that you feel is critical, um, whether it be tactical or mindset, for them to be successful with it. Yeah, so, so here's, what I would, here's what I would say is like, number one, realize that oh, I guess the, the big, big mindset behind wholesaling is that it is very, it's, is perpetrated as just a, a, it is actually perpetrated as a get rich quick scheme. Right. You know, like by, as a whole, you know, right. Hey, go out there and put out under contract and you're going to go sell that contract and get $10,000 and boom, now you got 10 grand. And it is, that is the overall mindset is quick money fast and you're going to get rich. That is right. the, in a, in a very short sentence. 
But that's not actually, you may do that, but overall, you and I both know that to actually do deals and do them well, like this last check, 24,000, from my first contact to close was probably about four months. Right. Of, of, with this seller, but 24 grand. So number one, if you're getting started in this, in this business, you're starting a business. You're not just starting a side hustle. You're actually starting a business. So treat it like a business. Like you're gonna have to put work into it. You're gonna have to spend some money. You're gonna have to follow up and you're gonna actually, you know, they say fortunes in the follow up, you know, continue to follow up with people over and over because the chances of you getting a lead and it turning into like, oh my God, I gotta sell immediately because of X, you know, it may happen, but it's not like the most likely thing. It's right. going to maybe need a little nurturing and follow up, you know? So that's going to happen, you know? So run your business like a business and have the mindset of like, I'm going to actually have to put in some work. And the guys who really succeed at a high level, they go through a lot of leads and they are actually putting in lots of work on the phone and, you know, communicating with sellers. You know, the more offers you make, the more deals you're going to get and just really run this like a business, not just like a quick 10 grand, you know, or 5,000 and just trying to wing it. You know, if you want to be in this business for a long time, just, yeah. and then lastly, like, don't like pick, if you're brand new to this business, don't pick five, six different people that you're trying to follow as a mentor. You know, don't pick Chris and all yeah. these other podcasters and different people and listen to their theories and methods. Now they all may work if you follow one of them, but if you listen to, you know, investor A or B or C right, and yeah. on Chris's videos and then you'd be like, well, Chris says this and this guy says this and now I'm putting out band of something. I'm doing Facebook marketing. Well, you're spreading yourself out so thin and you're getting like so much information in your head, you're never going to do anything. So just find one person like, like watch all, all Chris's stuff on YouTube, right? All the stuff, buy his course. And just like, I actually bought his course and I've done lots of deals, you know, I'm, you know, I, I paid for this stuff. So the, you know, invest in yourself and just like stick with it. So you don't get like overwhelmed with everybody else's information, like get information overload. And, like you never do a deal. So just go like plant the seed and like become a farmer and just, you know, they say, you know, dig your well before you're thirsty. So get out there and just work, 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 and you will see results in the future. That's my advice for somebody who's starting out. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing, uh, just to come back to one of the points you made, this is not like you're doing a side hustle on eBay that you're going to make some money and then, you know, you still got to go out and figure something else out to do. You know, real estate can be that thing that makes you an extra 10 K side money, but it also has the potential to be, to, 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 to be a business that you could be involved with for 10, 20, 30 years, right? Or, you know, your entire Absolutely. life, right? And yeah. even if I, you know, I always say that um, it's, even if you're involved with other things, um, it always makes sense to be involved in real estate, right? So if you think about it as, you know, there's so many different opportunities now, you know, there's Amazon drop shipping and all this other stuff. And some of that stuff just changes so rapidly from one year to the next, whatever work, you know, this last year isn't working this year. But at the end of the day, people still need houses to live in and people still have houses that need repairs and steep people have problems. And so that's a, that's a problem that that's something that's always going to exist. So there's always going to be an opportunity. Um, the other thing I wanted to just come back to, which I think is something that, um, that you're good at, but I think that most people, uh, don't, uh, really put emphasis on this and that, and that is the sales aspect of it. You know, yeah, I love this I'm, part. Yeah, I'm a fan of, you know, everybody has their flavor. I'm a fan of Jordan Belfort, right? And granted, I would say he did bad things. I'm not saying that. But, um, you know, when you can sell crappy penny stocks to million and make millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, you know what you're doing, right? I'm not going to use it to do that. But, um, and, and uh, I always think about the fact that uh, sometimes you could have the best lead generation. You could be generating leads and you could be doing great with that aspect of it. But if you're horrible on the phone and you can't build rapport with people and you don't know how to handle objections and everything else, then uh, that's a problem, right? Because it is a big problem. Yeah, it, it, I always say that it's never one thing. People always think that it's one thing. Oh, if I just get the right postcard, if I just get the right this. But I always say it's a combination of things that all come together, right? Because in order for you to get that deal, yeah, I know, granted, okay, uh, if I helped you with the Facebook marketing, that was only a small part of it. 
because you have to build rapport with the person. You have to analyze the deal. You have to know where to pick it up at. You needed the buyers to be able to sell it to. So there was a lot of different pieces in that puzzle that you needed to get right. Maybe yes. you got help from me on this one piece, but if, if everything else was horrible, you wouldn't have made that deal. So I don't know, what, what advice would you give for people um, that want to get better? How do you get better on the phone? Like, um, like one of the advice, I'll tell you my advice that I give people, and then I'd love to hear maybe an advice that you, you, could, uh, you could give to everybody here. I always say that, um, for me, my opinion is that you have to follow a script, you have to internalize it, and you have to know it like the back of your hand. And people say, well, you know, I don't want to sound robotic. And I say, well, if, if, you're, if you don't have a script down, and you don't know exactly what you're going to say, you're never really listening to the prospect because rather than listening, you're thinking, oh, what am I going to say next? If they say this, if they say that, so you have this whole conversation going on in your head. Whereas if you knew down pat exactly, if they said this, I know I'm going to say this. I know it like the back of my hand. Now you're listening. Now you're not longer thinking about what you need to say. And I always give the example of the um, a Broadway play or any sort of movie. When you look at those actors, like a Broadway play is a perfect example. You look at those actors and they're, they're saying those lines or they're saying them so naturally. But the only reason they can say those lines naturally is because they know them like the back of their hand. So now when I'm, if, I'm, if I have a script that, I'm, that I follow in terms of what I'm gonna tell the seller and I know that down code, now I can focus on my inflection. I can focus on how I sound. I can focus on the nuances of how I come across and listening to them at the same time. So I'm a big fan of like, you got to know what to say, exactly how to say it, because uh, winging it, it you know, doesn't work. That's my opinion. Uh, now, if you, if you disagree, I'm perfectly okay with that. But I'm wondering, you know, like what advice would you give to people on the sales side of it? So uh, when, when, I was, when I was training people to sell life insurance, people would get so nervous, especially going and knocking on a random stranger's door and going into ha to a house and you have to gather their personal information. You have to collect their bank account and their social security number all in the very first time you meet somebody. Okay. Yeah, that's hard, man. That's hardcore. Very hardcore. You just sell them a and vacuum cleaner like you are, you're at it, you're so good. You're like, you know what? I'm going to sell you a vacuum cleaner and then I'm going to... <laughs> Seriously, it, yeah. it is a very hard close yeah. to make. And to, because you have to build friendship and you have to do all this in a very, very limited time and then do it over and over and over again, all in the same day, multiple times. And so that is something that uh, is very difficult to wrap your head around. So when I was training people, I always told them this one thing, even on your very first appointment, when you're going to see someone for the very first time, that person you're going to see, they have no idea if you've done this one time or you've done this a thousand times. They have no clue. And you, have, because of your training that you've had, you know, maybe gone through a course or you've been trained by an individual, you have more knowledge about the process than they do. So get that in your head. Like you've been trained, you, you, you understand the scripts, you know, you should do your homework and like memorize those scripts and understand it and get it inside. But like calm the nerves down. You understand like what's supposed to happen. Number one, be a friendly person. Like get to get them to like you. Like talk. Yeah. Like calm down when you're on the phone with somebody and be like, just have a conversation because this is so much less about real estate actually than it is about solving somebody's issues. Because yeah. why in the world does somebody ever sell a house for so cheap? Because there's a problem. They've got you know. So be a real person. Don't be the Hey, I'm looking to buy houses in the area. You know, I never like I am anti that. You know, I am. Right. I even though I have like a business and I try to be a, like a normal guy, just on the phone. Hey, just just call about your property. Have you thought about selling it? You know, or if they fill out a Facebook lead. Hey, this is Bo. It's simply sold. Just I saw your information come through. Just wanted to call you. You got a second to talk about it? Yeah. And just just be a good listener. But always remember that you have had the training and that you have more information. You just be a real person. Like, treat them like you would want your your parent. Right. Your parents. And then just be that real person. And and don't try to be like a don't act as if. You know, don't act like act like you're the biggest home buyer in the world and just act like treat like if it's just me and Chris treat Chris like he's the only thing in the world that matters and just try to fix that problem and figure out how you guys can work together. And just, that's my approach as a very, uh, in, in a very simple way, just 
I like being the mindset of just approaching each individual person as a person and just trying to uh, fix their problems versus just a killer instinct and getting out right. there and doing it. And I, and I am, I am that guy to, you know, go out there, go out there and hustle and get it. I am that person, but the, the, the skill is actually a, being a really good listener, figuring out what's going on. And if you're on the phone with someone, you so nervous, but realize that you're on the phone. They can't, they can't punch you in the face or pull a gun on you all over the phone like they could in life insurance. You know, I had agents that had guns pulled on them. I mean, they had, they got, we got ran off properties. I mean, it was so like yeah. on the phone. Yeah. They can't say, they're not going to say anything to you that's going to make you cry or, you know, you know, they're just take it easy and just one phone call at a time, be a real person. That's my advice. And I, I do think that approach, it wins because, you know, it really, it, people like talking to real people because we all get so many robo calls and all that kind of yeah. stuff and we're bombarded by that stuff. Just being a real person goes so far. And the other thing is that, you know, you always have to think, you always have to think about that people, uh, people hold things close to their chest because they don't know who you are, what your agenda is. So they're trying to be protective of themselves. And uh, so a lot of times what, what I, what I recommend uh, many times people saying is laying the cards on the table, you know, Hey, Bo, you know what? Uh, just, you know, we're, we're looking to buy a couple houses in the area that need work. Sometimes we're a great solution. Sometimes we're not. All I want to do is just have a conversation. At the end of the day, we can decide to do something. We can decide not to do something. Whatever, whatever, the, situ whatever the, the end result is, it, I'm perfectly okay with it. I just don't want you to feel that, you have, you're on the, and the other, and that you're under any pressure or that I'm here to try to twist your arm or convince you of anything. And sometimes yep. just, just saying that, the people, you're going to sound different than everybody else. Because um, yes. yeah, I've had sellers that, um, uh, that have said, oh my gosh, I had this investor call me and they were horrible on the phone. And they're like, I, I couldn't wait to get off the phone with them. Um, and yes. uh, I'm happy for that because that means that then, you know, we have a better chance of getting the deal. But uh, I just think that people want to be, you know, I always say people wanted, you know, I always think about it as uh, people want to be treated with respect. And, uh, and, and they want to know that you know what you're doing, right? So that's, yeah. I definitely agree with you on that. And, um, and, and that you're trying, to you're trying to help them figure out a solution to the problem, right? Genuinely. Absolutely. You're just not trying to, you know, twist their arm or, you know, like even, even small questions like asking them, okay, well, tell me about, you know, normally when, when we buy a house, the day of closing, you're, you know, you're physically out of the property because we're taking possession of it. Is that, would that work for you? What's your situation? Do you need to stay at the property for a few days after? Or, you know, and then you start to ask you these questions and they, they start to get, you know, and, and they're genuine questions because I do want to know what their situation is so we can accommodate them. Uh, but now they're thinking to themselves, okay, well, nobody's asked me this before. So I like the way that, that this guy's working with me because he's trying to figure out my situation and how I can. So I think it's just being uh, a friend of mine. that was a, uh, his advice was just, just be a person, just be a human being talking to another human being. Don't be a robot. <laughs> Absolutely. Because yeah. so many times people are just trying to get, they're trying to get the deal so bad that they forget that yeah. we're dealing with people and people have messy lives, you know, just be a, yeah. get out there and just talk to people, you know, like you can't, you know, try to bully your way into getting someone to accept that offer and let them know, like you said, you know, I always let people know, Hey man, you know, if this works out awesome, if not, we're going to still be friends. I mean, is that okay? You know, we're not going to, you're not going to hurt my feelings. If you reject yeah. my offer, so let them know, Hey, if it works for you, then great. We'll purchase the house. If not, that's okay too. One last one question I had that I forgot to ask you is with the simply sold, uh, you're located predominantly right now in the one market, right? Yeah. Uh, are you planning on expanding into other markets? Yeah, so that was one of the reasons why I went with Simply Sold too, because it's not geographically locked into one location. Right. You know, so I can expand to different markets and do uh, virtual, virtually anywhere in, in America with, right. with this brand. So that was one of the reasons why I put a lot of emphasis on brand building was so I could go in different markets and partner up with certain people in markets and grow both of our businesses, you know, by, by joint venture. Well, because the thing I thought about is obviously with Facebook, it's easy to go in and uh, just go in and drop into a market. And the other thing is, is almost from a, uh, like for you, you have the branding and, and if you have, you have the marketing campaigns, and everything else, you can easily go into a market and just implement what you're doing now. And then, and then you could get, you know, get somebody on board to help you in that market. 
Um, yeah, so you have boots on the ground. Somebody can go go look at the right. properties and yeah. everything. We just we funnel leads and really yeah anywhere. Yeah, so I, I like that. I like that. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of your domain. <laughs> that sounds really yeah. weird, by the way, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's okay, man. You know, there's lots of great yeah. ideas out there, and yeah. it's uh, but, but I do think respect, it's great man, myself. I, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm Puerto Rican, so I'm not gonna go in in the middle of the night and try to steal your domain. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I am it was always, something for me that I, I am very proud of it. Yeah, I like I it. Put I like a lot of effort it. into it. So you know, it's funny. The only thing I think about, I think it, it's going to be something huge. I, mean, I do. You what? I think it's going to be something huge. I think it's going to be. I, I said I think that the domain. I think it's going to be something really, really big and powerful at some point. I, I like the good. domain. I like the domain because I see. You know, it, it's like it. It very much fits into the mold of. You know, a lot of times these these uh, these uh, different startups they have you know they have these names that don't make any sense, but they yeah. kind of do. But like, there's Open Door and there's this and that, and yours has, and then they have the other extremes that are like you know um, American Cash Offer, right? That like there's, but yours kind of fits in the middle. It has that. It has the uh, it has the real estate side of it, right? Kind of in there, but it has yeah. the elegance. Has the elegance of the uh, of the some of some of those weird names that these companies come up with that you have no idea what they uh, what they do. So I, I think it's a great domain. Uh, I, I I just think about how many times I've gone into Namecheap to uh, to look for domains, and uh, and I spent hours looking and I can't. And uh, I think that you know some, some, you know you, with you what you did is buy it. Um, and sometimes you have to bite the bullet and if you really want a good name, you gotta, you gotta buy it. So I think it was a great, you know, like, like Trevor mock, man, he, you know, that with on with carrot.com, yeah. you know, they just recently purchased their carrot.com domain right on carrot and they transitioned to carrot.com and you know, he had spent $600,000 on the domain name carrot.com. And when he did that, it really put a lot of more belief in me, like, to believe in what I'm doing, believe in my brand, believe in right. ourselves, like what we're doing, like commit, you know, actually commit. There's a lot of people like commitment is not very popular. Yeah. Days, you know, and really just committing to what we're doing and, and being the best at what we're doing is, is really important. I think in my books, Yeah. And, you know, don't be afraid to spend money on who you are and your brand and like get out there and, and believe in something. It's worth it. Well, I really appreciate us, uh, you know, spending some time together on the phone. So for no, number one, number two, and, and, and the sharing, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, I just keep on thinking about every time I, I look at you, I keep on thinking about that lady saying your eyes. <laughs> so maybe $25,000 or 24 grand. Right. Exactly. If that's true. Yeah. If so, that's true. Uh, I want to put in the description some links um, for maybe people that may want to reach out to you. Um, are you typically on, you know, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of them? Uh, but is there one particular platform that most of the time people can uh, can can uh, get a hold of you at if they wanted to connect with you? Yeah, so I, I'm on Facebook at Bo Hollis. Okay, um, and then I'm on Instagram at Bo Hollis as well. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I talk about two things: real estate. Uh, I post some family stuff. Uh, but real estate and barbecue are my main two things. I, I love doing that. Like barbecue is my hobby. I'm actually a, a certified barbecue judge. Really? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So I went and got certified as a barbecue judge and I'm going to do competition barbecue and it's something that I really, truly, I have, I love, I love good food because you can get together with your buddies and hang out and yeah. uh, sit around and talk about real estate at my house or you just hang out. It's something that is very enjoyable, a good meal, you know, with your friends and family. So, so you, well, must have a, I, you must have a good setup at your house. What do you, you got like, you got some good equipment over there. Yeah, I do. Oh, I, do. Man. I, I have spent some time and money to uh, make out, make my stuff cool. So interesting. I do enjoy that. So, so, it's, so but do you live in St. Louis though, right? No, Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, that, you know, that's where Bill Rafter, uh, Bill Rafter lives. Yeah, he lives in Lexington. Lexington. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, Bill, an hour away from me. A long time ago, 2008 to 2010, Bill, Bill, Bill Rafter and I worked together. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's very, very technical. He, he knows a lot of tech, the tech side of things. That, yeah. Um, detail, the detail guy. So, yeah, so you're, you're uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, do I have, I, I don't, unfortunately, it's like maybe I might have to make a, 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 a stop somewhere on the way, but I, I don't have that as one of my spots to go to. <laughs> 
you gotta yeah. come, man. It's it's yeah. super fun. It's yeah. a great spot, and gotta get you to come to the Kentucky Derby at some point. Oh, you know what? I've been talking to my wife about that. I said to her, I said, you know, I think my daughters and us, it would be really cool to go to the Kentucky Derby. My daughter, you know, my, they love to dress up. And, um, yeah. and it looks like an experience. And I see these guys. Oh, I, saw Grant, I saw you. So maybe uh, I'd love to go to that. I, I, I would do a real estate mastermind on Derby. Kentucky, at Derby. Kentucky Derby. That would be pretty cool. When, when do they have Kentucky Derby? It's the first Saturday in May. It's first Saturday in May. You know, every should, year. We should we should keep that conversation going because I would like so to go to the fun, Kentucky man. Derby. And it's then that's located here, so people could drive in. It's not far away from a lot yeah. of places. It'd be really fun. Did you decide to go to VidCon? Oh, I was actually just uh, talking to Max Maxwell about that the other day because he said he's going to VidCon too. And oh, interesting. Okay, so I'll be there. So, yeah, that, I would. I've been thinking about going. That'd be so so fun. I'm oh, sure my, if I if I took my kids, I'm sure they would want to meet Ryan. From Ryan's toy review. Um, oh no! Okay, yeah, my daughters. Well, you got if you're gonna go. So I just uh, we're going to go. We're, uh, I'm going. I'm this next week. I'm I'm flying to Europe, and then I'm gonna come back from Europe, be here for about a week, and then I'm gonna be in in California for three weeks. And the first week oh, I'm awesome. there is for BidCon, and so then uh, they're having a lottery. So there's a lottery, and I think that they 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 end the lottery. So if you're gonna to decide to go, you would want to decide to go like today or tomorrow because you want to buy the tickets, and then you have to you have to go in and in the lottery system they have to say who they want to see. Uh, oh wow! Yeah. So That's crazy. So my so daughters, we we've been going through this selection process because they want to see certain creators. So we'll be there the week. Um, I've never sp I've never spoken with Max. Uh, so maybe I got a chance to see him uh, over there. But uh, yeah, he's very intelligent. He, he he's he's smart. He knows his stuff. He's a good guy. Yeah. So um so that's interesting. Yeah, so that's very cool. You know, the uh, one thing I was going to mention. The last thing. It's like funny you mentioned the barbecue uh, as being a great thing for everybody to get together, etc. The thing I've been do I I got into is uh, poker. So really? uh, so rather than like you know if you have a group of eight people getting together or ten people and you go to a restaurant typically you have two people sitting across from each other and then you have other people at the other end of the table and you only talk to like your little group and and not the other because it's in a crowded restaurant etc. And so then what I ended up doing is I ended up buying uh, I spent like yeah. three, three four hundred three hundred dollars I ended up buying a poker kit I went and did the research I wanted to make sure that the that the chips were actual uh, casino you know, uh, the same casino chips. Cause I said, well, if I decided to go to the casino, I don't, I don't want to be thrown off because the chips are now feel different right now. My game is thrown off. Then I, and I ended up getting uh, some, uh, I bought a course on poker. And so then now I, and I bought a mat and the whole thing. And so then now we have these, um, we, uh, we have these get togethers with eight to 10 people and we play, you know, small, you know, 20, 25, $30 uh, buy-in. And we sit there for like three hours and we all play poker. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're new, we'll teach you. And we'll have a couple of games just to kind of get things going. And then everybody plays. And uh, we've been finding it, it's, it's, it's great for, you know, just getting together and breaking bread and, and just being in front of people for like three hours and you're playing. It's interesting, but at the same time, you're chatting with each other and everything else. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's funny when you mentioned that's really that, cool. That, 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 so maybe we need to uh, we need to combine the uh, uh, barbecue with poker. That's the thing. that would be super fun and have real estate guys come in and we can do yeah. barbecue, and poker, and real estate. Yeah, that would be really fun, man. I like and that. I like that. Yeah, we have to that because a lot of times a lot of people who teach this kind of stuff they don't really they don't keep it real. You know, they don't yeah. keep it like family and this kind of cool stuff. Yeah. And that people would flock to these kind of events because it would be so fun, you know, to have fun in real estate. It'd be really cool. I like that. I like, we have to continue this conversation about that because yeah. I like the idea of uh, barbecue, some poker and Kentucky Derby. That would be yes. pretty cool. Right? Yeah. That'd, <laughs> That'd be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, again, I really appreciate our time together and uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, for you to get more, more deals on Facebook and, and, and grow it and uh, excited for you with what you got with your, with Simply Sold. So, but again, really appreciate our time together. And uh, guys, I'm going to put in the description 
um, uh, Bo's links. Uh, so if you wanted to reach out, uh, reach out to him, show him some love, let him know that uh, you appreciated our time here together. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, post a comment. Let me know if uh, you know what you thought about the uh, interview. And if you have any questions or need something else clarified, feel free to post a question and we'll come back and uh, we'll answer them for you. So thanks again, guys. And thanks, Bo. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Chris. All right.